Freedom Day, the day of restrictions being lifted, no more face masks, no more social distancing, and the economy and the country as we knew it returning to normal. Nightclubs now open. <laughs> restaurants at full capacity, shops with no queues, fans returning to big events. But what felt like a positive step forward became the investors' nightmare as the FTSE 100 dropped 2.5% and the Great British Pound dropped to six-month lows against the United States dollar. So what is this? A day of freedom and future prosperity or the start of what could just be a very, very rough winter for individuals and investors alike? Well, in today's video, I thought I'd share with you guys some of the key news headlines. We'll talk about some economic variables. We'll talk about investor sentiment in the market right now. And I'll also give my own personal thoughts as to why I personally believe that we will see a market correction for the FTSE 100 over the coming months ahead, if not something that could be a hell of a lot worse. But before I dive into it, guys, my name is Mitch. I post all kinds of videos on investing and the stock market. If you do enjoy content like that, hit that big red subscribe button down below as well. Drop a like on the video, guys. Really, really helps out the channel. With that being said, let's dive straight into it. England took a leap into the unknown, a big gamble which could go either way as a result of rising case numbers across the country, bringing the fear mongering back to the mainstream media. With a seven day average of 45,500 cases, we're not a million miles away from the peak numbers on record at the start of 2021. Now, as a result of Boris Johnson lifting restrictions, this has certainly presented investors with both a bull case as well as a bear case for the FTSE 100. So first up on the positive side, on the bullish side of the investor fence, you've certainly got an opportunity now for some recovery stocks to certainly look to recover and look to gain some momentum now that all of the restrictions have been lifted, which should lead to additional consumer spending and therefore allowing businesses which have struggled all so much over the course of the past 18 months to hopefully recover some of the losses in which they've certainly experienced. But on the bearish side of the fence, you've got some investors talking about the lifting of restrictions too early. And as a result, it will have a worse longer term impact on the economy as a result of additional lockdowns which will have to take place, resulting in a deeper recession, potentially more job losses, and as a result, higher levels of credit default. And before we know it, we're probably going to be presented with a financial crisis 2.0. And it's certainly the bearish sentiment that took hold of the UK stock market as fear and uncertainty it certainly took hold on the market itself. And as a result, risk assets sold off heavily. Because as we all know, investing psychology plays a huge part in the overall movement and the volatility of stock markets on the whole. Before anybody even knew the potential outcomes or the consequences of the pandemic, at the start of 2020, the UK stock market sold off 32.3% within the space of two months. The cycle of fear and uncertainty, as well as optimism and euphoria, have certainly ruled the markets in the past, and they will do so in the future as well. Now, with the media narrative certainly hotting up and spreading more fear than they have done over the course of most recent months, this could just be one of the potential catalysts that has resulted in this big sell-off across the UK stock market. But it's not just the media narrative that has resulted in the UK stock market selling off. It's actually the real impact on businesses as a result of the actions taken by the UK government. From this article in which I was reading, it says that from retail to manufacturing and hospitality, the warnings are coming thick and fast that mandatory isolation is leading to reduced business operating hours, a drag on sales and a reduction of output. And this certainly couldn't be more true with the requirement to isolate for 10 days if you've been pinged by the Track and Trace app, regardless of whether you've had one vaccine or two, or even if you have no symptoms and a negative test result to go with it, you're still having to do that isolation period, which is having a massively adverse effect on business sales as well as business output too. And this issue certainly runs too far because it's not just about the businesses which will potentially have declining sales and output as a result of colleagues having to isolate, but those same individuals are no longer consuming and spending money at the businesses in which they usually would have due to the fact that they're having to isolate for 10 days. So overall, it affects multiple businesses for every one individual that has to go on to do their isolation. And as a result, it's a net negative impact on businesses when we look at top line revenue as well as bottom line earnings as well. And with a positive correlation between a company's net earnings as well as their stock price performance as well, well, if we're seeing declining earnings, the chances are we're also going to see declining stock prices as well. And just the thought of all of this caused the UK stock market, the FTSE 100 specifically, to sell off £44 billion just on Monday alone, which you certainly might not think is all that much of a big deal, especially if you're looking at the kind of $2 trillion value 
valuations of companies like Apple and Microsoft if you're investing heavily into the US stock market, but £44 billion over in the FTSE 100 is a pretty significant chunk when we consider the total market cap of the FTSE 100 on the whole is only £1.8 trillion. To compound all of these problems, we also have the issue of inflation, which recently came out at 2.5%, which is 50 basis points above that of the Bank of England target inflation rate. And with warnings that inflation could rise to 4% and above by the end of the year, well, it suggests that the worst is yet to come. As a result, interest rates may need to go up at some point in the near future in order to be able to curb inflation. And as a result, what was previously cheap money to get hold of all of a sudden now becomes more expensive. And the likelihood is that will result in a hell of a lot of people starting to default on their loans, which will lead to a hell of a lot of financial suffering. To compound this issue further from an investing standpoint with higher levels of inflation, that will also mean that we'll need to discount the future earnings of the companies in which we're invested into. And as a result, with the declining future values of the pound amount of those net earnings in which we're looking for that business to make, the chances are that that stock will then look to sell off in order to balance itself out. So look, there are a ton of different economic variables which look like they're all pointing towards a potential UK stock market sell-off if we cannot get this pandemic under control. I think the underlying truth is that the UK government simply don't know what else to do. It looks like they've run out of options and they simply don't have the solution to tackle the problem in which we face. 36 million people have now been vaccinated, yet case numbers are rising quicker now than they were when nobody even had the vaccine. Our path to freedom isn't working as successfully as I think everybody hoped it would. And as a result, there are a lot of people, as well as a lot of investors, scratching their heads as to what's going to happen next. As an investor, it makes it very, very difficult to invest into a market that's so uncertain and where you've got the government continuously changing their rules. Until there is some kind of certainty and additional stability for UK markets and the UK economy, I think we'll see investors certainly look to flee UK equity markets and certainly look to put their money into more risk off assets. But what's potentially worse, leaving more UK investors feeling probably a little bit more vulnerable is when you compare the UK market or the FTSE 100 to that of the US counterpart, which is the S&P 500. The reason being the US stock market has gone from strength to strength and is trading 26% higher than pre-pandemic market highs, whilst the FTSE 100 on the other hand looks weak across the board as we're still down 10.6% from the pre-pandemic market highs in January 2020. For me right now, whilst on paper the FTSE 100 certainly looks like the better value investment when we compare that to the premiums being paid for US stocks, but for me personally, right now I simply don't have the confidence to invest into the UK stock market so for that very reason it's something that I won't be investing into anytime soon. But having said all that I hate to just come on here and kind of spread additional doom and gloom on the potential of what could possibly happen over the course of the coming months ahead so I think it's probably worth what me saying here is that regardless of how big of a potential market crash in which we could see I personally will not be selling out of any single one of my positions in which I currently hold within my investment portfolio. I'm certainly not going to be panic selling and in actual fact I'll use this as an opportunity to invest more money into the stock market and into the stocks in which I personally believe have the best amount of future long-term potential. Stock market corrections and crashes certainly don't feel great in the moment but in actual fact it's the biggest opportunity for the transfer of wealth to take place where you've got some individuals panic selling their way out of the market whereas you've got other individuals using it as a great opportunity to acquire more assets at discounted prices, which will go on to grow in value over the course of the long term. So having said all that, guys, be sure to let me know what your thoughts are on the FTSE 100, the UK stock market. What's your personal sentiment and views on the future of the UK stock market right now? And with that said, guys, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And with that being said, see you over in the next video.